Well, hello and welcome. My name is Caitlin, and we'll be looking at some of my 1860s parasols today. I have a collection of 50-ish parasols from 1830 to 1885, and maybe around 10 1860s examples, and we're going to be looking at those today. Um, so let's start with 1860s fashion in general. Uh, the hoop skirt, the cage crinoline, is predominating during this time period. It never was fully round um, and circular. It was always a little bit more in the back than it was in the front. But of course, as the 1860s progresses, we're getting more and more fullness to the back till we get the elliptical late to post-war shape. Um, again, like the 1850s, if um, it's daytime, you're usually wearing a jewel neckline, which means to your throat. Um, we're having smaller sleeves at this point in time as compared to the 1850s. Um, if they are open, we're usually having closed cuffs. And if we're going outside, we're probably wearing gloves. So again, like the 1850s, the only thing you really need to worry about covering is your face. And I have my 1860s, favorite 1860s bonnet with me today. This one was made by Danielle Perry at Timely Tresses. This is my favorite bonnet that I own. It has a veil on it, but it's very, very pretty. I love the red. And again, I still don't have my period hair, so this is not going to fit by any stretch of the imagination. But you can kind of see. Let me get into frame. You see, even if I turn to the side, it is not covering my face whatsoever, even less so than the 1850s version did. And so, this is not going to do anything to shade your face from the sun, which is where a parasol comes into play. And um, let's see, most of our parasols today we're going to see are going to be black. Um, we're going to, in the 1850s, we saw a lot of colored examples, very pretty, gorgeous fabrics. Um, not so much in the 1860s. Black predominates, which I say is a good thing because, honestly, if you're only kid only own one parasol, might as well move, go with everything you own. So black will go with almost anything, and it, so it does really work well from a living historian's point of view. If you have a parasol, it works with everything. Um, I will say... Uh, before we get started, there's a lot of misconceptions about, um, oh, I'm older, I'm going to be using an older parasol from the early 1850s, um, or I live out in the middle of nowhere, I can't get a fashionable parasol. That is simply not true. Um, I live in Texas, and I have been studying the use of parasols in Texas, and we did have access to um, parasols here in Texas, even the fashionable ones. Um, by the 1840s, we could get parasols um, in Texas from London, Philadelphia, New York. Um, we had two parasol manufacturers in Texas. Um, one was in Houston and one was in Austin. Um, those are just the two that I know of that I've found so far. And so we could get anything even out in the wilds of Texas. And so I know no one else has an excuse. If Texas could get it, then y'all could as well. So we're going to be seeing a lot of, um, of American-made parasols today. But if you are a living historian, I would highly suggest going with an 1860s parasol within a year or two of what the date you're trying to portray. So I did a very brief photographic survey of parasols. Basically, I pulled my images of parasols. I had about 50 of them. It was just the first 50 that I saw. There was no um, sorting them of any kind, which is there's a parasol in this picture. And I found out that it didn't matter the age of the wearer, most of the parasols, I'd say all but two of them, let's say all that, all but two of them were within a year or two of the dress or the date that was given on the photograph. And so you are going to be having a very up-to-date parasol, even if you are older, even if you live in the middle of nowhere. So I do want to say that, first of all, if you are doing mid-war, you probably wouldn't have a parasol from 1857. You're going to have an 1860, 1861 parasol. If you're doing even 1863, I would say you probably more to 1861 to 1863 parasol. So, that being said, let's look at some parasols. So the first one I have today um, is this tiny little thing, and I recovered her. If you've seen my 1850s video, you know I can't recover parasols. This one's horrendous. I did a very poor job of her. But her lining looks so nice. I did an excellent job on the lining. I don't know how that works. I either get the lining or the cover. I cannot get both. Anyway, so this is um, an American-made parasol. This is called, this is the Marquis. So if you know, saw my 1850s video, you know Marquis just simply means that they can do this. And these predominate in um, American-made um, manufacturers in the 1860s. You'll see basically this parasol. And um, this is an earlier type, so they have the ball as a finial and also the ball on the handle that dates it earlier than some of the other examples we're going to see. 
And I will say, fringe is now out. We do not have fringed parasols anymore in the 1860s. We do ruffles now. So ruffles are very much in. Um, so the American May Marquise can have no ruffles, as this example does. It can have a single ruffle all the way around. It can have two ruffles, one here and one here. It can have a chevron ruffle. It can do a chevron, a cubito plane and chevron here. Or they can both be the set chevron zigzag. So you have lots of options for trimming, but no fringe. The other thing to mention is that American May Marquis parasols are all black. They are black painted wood. The sle little sleeves that we talked about in our 1850s video, they are all black. Uh, the linings are generally black, although a little bit later in the war you'll start seeing a few ivory or white ones and a couple more late post-war pale pink. But and the covers are always going to be black. So if you find an American marquee parasol, if it has metal ribs and it folds and it's a marquee, it's probably an 1860s American marquee parasol and it needs to be recovered in black. They were not green, they were not blue, they were not pretty colors, they were black. And so I do want to mention that because if you're going to recover one, please do it in black. That's basically the first one. She's very tiny. She's one of my smaller parasols we're going to see today. All right, the next one. The next one I'm in the process of recovering. So she does not have any um, cover on her now, but she was covered completely in black as well. Uh, her lining is black too, if I recall. I think her lining is black. Yes, it is black. And she has a beautiful black lace cover on top of it. This one is pretty poor condition. This is what she has. You see all the holes in it. And there's a big one right here. And so, yeah, I can't find one to replace this with, and I'm not good at restoring lace. So this is going to go sit in the in a acid-free tissue, well, actually free tissue paper in an acid-free box until either I learn how to restore these or it's going to stay there forever. <laughs> but I have not found a good lace recover cover for her. So what I'm probably going to do is recover her in black. And then I have some Chantilly lace that I'm going to do a ruffle around. Um, kind of hanging off. I have a similar one that's a little bit further down. We'll look at her and I'll show you what I plan on doing with this one. And then if I ever find a good replacement for the lace or I manage to, re to fix this one, then I will put her in the lace, and then the lace that's going to go around her now will become part of the dress. So everything will get used, but you see her metal ribs. So metal ribs are now um, in. You saw my 1850s video, you saw a lot of them were cane or baleen. All of my 1860s ones are metal ribs. They are very much predominant in this time period. We have a beautiful bone um, handle, a little knob at the end. This is just painted wood. And it looks to me like she might be a marquee because all this all of this brass up here and she wiggles but I cannot it's, it's a very fancy type and I can see where there is a hinge so I know she is but there's a a trick lever apparently because she won't just fold and I don't know what's going on with this if I had to pull this down because this pulls down but I can't get her to I can get her to wiggle more but it's like I can't pull her down far enough for it to get to work anyway so that's something to work with on her and yes so we have her upper ribs and her lower ribs lots of brass bits up here her finial is complete one of my rare examples bone i will say all the american made marquees that we're going to see they're all, they don't have any bone in them whatsoever it's part of what we do it makes them very cheap we're going to talk about that in a second with the next parasol but yes very plain um brass cover you see her folding mechanism Yes, so that is the plan. I have some black silk taffeta to recover her in, and then some lovely black silk lawn to do her lining, and then some lace to go around her that is coming in from France. And so that is going to be my parasol for an event in April, so next month. I hope it comes in on time, the lace. We'll see. If not, she'll just be a plain black parasol, which is totally appropriate. So that's her. Next one, this is my very special parasol. This is the very first parasol I ever purchased, probably around seven or eight years ago. Why is she st she's being stuck today? And I've recovered her probably about six times, so she's still not perfect. Um, she's a lot better than the first five times I tried, though. And you can see she has a single ruffle. This is exactly what her original cover looked like. And her lining looks pretty horrendous. Um, most of it's probably just 
Most of it's probably just because I don't use her very often and it's just wrinkles. But, you know, whatever. She's a knob at her end, but she has a long finial. So it's a little bit later than the first one. Um, my marquee dating is very shaky, but my understanding is ball here and ball here is the earliest type appearing in 1860. And then um, you'll start seeing the finials get longer here. And then you'll start seeing um, various types of, you know, like L shaped coming out of here. You'll see some hooks later on. Carving comes in on the handles. But these are very, very cheap parasols. So we're talking, I've seen them advertised for sometimes a, a dollar. So this is an everybody parasol. Anyone can own one. If you're um, concerned about the cost of a parasol, say you're you know, a working class person, a farmer's wife or whatever, this is a good, good parasol. And by the sheer number of those that have survived the last 150 years, they were certainly plentiful. And so you can usually find them for less than $50 online if you really look. Um, if you do early war stuff, I would highly suggest either this type with the long finial and the ball, or even um, the finial and, um, or the balls and the finial as well. Um, that's what I would suggest. Again, please recover them only in black. And this is a very good starting parasol. They're a metal roof, so they're harder to break than the baleen or the cane. <laughs> and so, um, it's a good way to practice how to recover parasols. It's uh, very forgiving because, you know, if you do mess up, you can recover with more ruffles, which is my philosophy. The more ruffles, the better, because it makes it look it makes it look nicer. So, um, and these are also all machine sewn. So a lot of parasols in the 1850s I didn't mention, but they were are uh, mostly hand sewn, and so this requires less labor. So they are very very cheap parasols. No bone whatsoever. They're all wood. Black silk tends to be a little bit cheaper, and it's um, when you buy it in bulk quantities, it's even cheaper than you know, normal. And then everything's machine sewn and all metal ribs. So this is very cheaply manufactured parasol, but they last a very long time. And again, very good starter parasol if you're playing your average person, um, portraying your average person. Now, I don't portray the average person, but I do occasionally use a, a nice marquee parasol, particularly one with more ruffles to make it look a little fancier. So. I also figure, you know, there's a war going on, so maybe we don't have as much money to spend on fancy new parasols, so maybe I'm buying a few more of these, kind of come later in the war. This is my favorite 1860s parasol. This is my gorgeous, oh yes, Chantilly lace paper parasol with immaculate lace, just gorgeous lace. And the only thing she's missing is her little, we talked in the other video, so this little bead here is open because it would hold a bra um, a bone ring to hold the parasol on. Um, she came to me, hmm, how do I put this nicely since we're you know, on the internet? Some poor misguided soul had decided that uh, her cover was too far gone and to replace it, which is not a problem because that's what I do anyway. Hi kitty cat, she's over here, she wants attention. I put the dogs outside so... She's lonely. Um, and so they decided to recover her. The only problem with them recovering her is they apparently had never seen what a real 1860s parasol looked like because they recovered her in a four-way stretch, polyester, shiny costume monstrosity. It was horrendous, okay? That was the only parasol cover I have ever thrown away because even if they come to me recovered and I recover them after that, my philosophy is it is still part of the parasol's history and it therefore needs to be saved. That went in the trash. That was, that was horrendous. That was, I swear, sometimes I have nightmares about that sort of thing. It, it was bad. It was, it was so ugly and hideous. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> because I didn't have her original cover to play off of, I got to play with what colors I wanted. And these are French-made parasols and there is no war going on in France. And so we have very prettily colored, colored, parasols. You'll see a lot of them in black. You'll see them with white covers. Um, you'll see them in all colors of the rainbow. I've seen them in green and blue and purple and um, orange uh, and browns. And so very, very, oh, I need to, that, that kind of fell off. I need to fix that right here. But yes, yeah, so I decided I wanted it to be purple because the dress I was planning on wearing it with is a little bit later, 1865. It's a elliptical shape. And I, it was a beautiful green colored silk. And I was like, purple would look really good with that. And so that is what I chose to recover her in. 
Um, these parasols are very expensive. I have in, let's see, I think it's called Umbrellas in Their History, and it was from the 1850s, I believe. And it stated that the lace-covered parasol are being sold anywhere from $75 to $150. If I'm not mistaken, I'll have to go back and check my facts on that. Um, and of course, that's 1850s money. So these are incredibly expensive parasols compared to a dollar to hundred dollars. Like, so this is a parasol that I would be using in my living history because I portray someone who, whose family by 1827, when just a few years after they came here to Texas, was making a hundred thousand dollars on their cotton crop alone. Um, again, that's not counting all the things you know, like they were selling corn, or they were selling corn, and they were selling sugar. That's just their cotton crop which roughly translates to $2.7 million a year in profit they were making. And so I'm not your average person, and so this is something that I would be owning and using, which is one of the reasons I purchased her. Um, but yeah, she is lined, and again, I need to fix right here. It came undone. But her beautiful handle here, all beautifully carved um, bone, and usually these do unscrew in several places. So I don't know why, but this little part will unscrew. And it looks like this part and this part unscrew as well. Usually they're about three or four pieces. So, but this is my absolutely beautiful parasol that I love so much. I just love her lace. Um, as far as the price difference, because there is a big price difference between 75 and 150, I assume it has something to do with the fact with, you know, if it was bone all the way up as opposed to partially wood, that would be a more expensive parasol. There are different qualities of Chantilly lace, so this one is a very, very fine, gorgeous lace. Um, the one that I showed earlier is also, it's a little, it's not as fine as this one is. So this one is not as fine as this, but it's, it's closer. And I have one I'll show you later on that's a very, very coarse lace. And I assume that would be a less expensive parasol than this lace and also colored silk I would assume would be a little bit less expensive or more expensive than black or white so those are my theories um, I have no proof on any of that just you know thought my thought process on that let's see trying to get her closed all right the next one's another American made marquee we have this one this one has two chevron ruffles on her actually and it didn't do a terrible job recovering her, and the worst parts of her are just covered in ruffles. So, you know, that's my philosophy. Just cover everything on ruffles. That's what the 1860s are good for. Ruffles, ruffles. And she is covered in black as well. Her handle here is, I call them L-shaped handles, and there is no carving on it, so I probably date it. But there is carving out here, so I'd say like 1862, 1863 ish. Maybe. Again, my marquee dating is pretty, pretty sketchy, but yeah, she is a marquee. I use her quite frequently in my mid-war stuff because I don't have a lot of mid-war parasols. This is my frequent flyer for mid-war. Mm -hmm. And she came to me um, recovered as well because her, her, the cover she came to me with was not silk. It was very odd feeling, but it wasn't silk. Um, and so I, I recovered her for that reason. Um, but I still have the cover that because I do believe they should be saved unless they are four-way stretch polyester and then they deserve to be burned. Um, this is my next my next one. So this one I use a lot. This is, um, my understanding is it's from England. And so basically we saw a lot of English parasols in the um, other video. And so this is basically, I think, the 1860s version of that. I got her from England, so that's what I would assume. And she has ruffles. So she's a very, very tiny um, brown and white striped silk which the original was black and white striped, and I could not find find I could not find fine striped silk in black and white. So it ended up having to be brown. It's still neutral. I think it's okay. And then she had the black ruffles as well. So it's very, very similar to what she would have looked like, except for black and white instead of brown and white. Um, she's missing a bit of her finial, but not too bad. I assume you would have held it like this. And it still works pretty well, even with just the one part. So, you know, that's how she gets used. And she is lined, and this is actually the best recovery job I have ever done on the parasol. There are very few ruffle, wrinkles, either, and the lining either. I don't know how that managed to happen, but I'm very thankful. But yes, yeah, she has a little corrosion on her, um, on that. But other than that, she's in pretty good shape. I use her quite frequently. Um, there actually was interesting, when I uncovered her, I found out that one of her ribs had been broken and replaced with another rib that wasn't quite the same as the others. And I assume that happened sometime in the period because her 
um, cover looked like I would expect an 1860s parasol cover to look like. So I think it was her original cover. And I think someone in the period, I think her rib broke and someone fixed it. So there's one rib that is different than all the other ribs, which is very interesting. So, but yeah. I, I use this one quite frequently. <laughs> this is a very normal parasol for me to use. All right, and now we're gonna start getting to some with original covers on. Because, yeah, actually, I'll put one of these, huh? okay. So this one, this one I absolutely adore. This is probably a little bit later, maybe 1865. And I'm only saying that because she is beading across here. This is all beading. It goes down here and it goes up and down and across. And I know some, I've seen some 1865 advertisements for beaded parasols. So that's my assumption on that. I have no proof of that other than, you know, the beading. But it's absolutely beautiful. So she has a champagne colored, um, silk that's actually very, very finely striped. It's like a rib silk. I don't know if you can see that in there. And then she's covered with um, silk gauze. And then she has little ruffles and the, some of it has little bits of lace on there. It's just a very, very beautiful parasol. And she has a marquee. You see her wiggle. But this is her original cover, so I'm not going to open it to see the marquee part. Her handle is um, like a shepherd's crook which tend to come a little bit later. I would say this is probably 1865, just because of that as well. But it's very plain, wood all the way up here. And her finial is wood too, but it has this part is tipped in bone. So this part is bone, the rest of it is um, wood. And I absolutely love this parasol. All right, the next one. This one is probably what I want to do with the one I'm recovering now, is it just has two little lace ruffles and lace up here as well. So that's probably what I'm going to plan on doing. And she's a marquee. I don't know if she's an American made marquee. I've never seen one with lace on it, but this could very well, she could have, the woman could have purchased it plain and said, hmm, I have some lace on this, let's dress it up. And this could have been added by the owner. Her fabric is like a silk satin. It's very shiny. But she's a marquee. You see her wiggle. This is also sold to me as a broken parasol. And she is not lined for whatever reason which is very unusual for 1860s parasols. All the other ones are lined. I wonder what happened. She could have been unlined by some previous owner. Hmm, interesting. And then her handle has some carving detail to it. I don't know if that's gonna show up on the camera or not. But yes, that is her. And that's probably what I'm gonna plan on doing with the other one, um, just adding lace until I can find a good lace. Um, you know, cover for her. This is another marquee. Um, this one, again, is another one that's plain, and she has her original cover, but she has a very beautiful carved wood detail with an L handle. It's very pretty. Um, she is covered in black with no ruffles and lined in black as well. And her finial is definitely needs to be painted again, <laughs> but I won't be doing that. She's going to stay all original, so I have no need for her. I prefer to, um, I prefer to conserve instead of restore. So she's going to stay all original, and yes, she can stay just like that. All right, my next one. This is kind of an interesting one. So this one has a broken rib that one day I will fix at some point in time. I don't know when that time is going to be, but I will eventually. Um, she is missing a rib, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so I just have a little bit here and that's it. She has a beautifully carved handle. Just beautifully carved. I would not want to be the one doing that. And she is bone all the way up. Um, it's actually very interesting. I know you won't be able to see it on the video, but way up here. Let's see if I can pull her down so I can get, at least get her close to the... Yeah, way up here. And I know y'all aren't going to be able to see that, but there's a little stamped name in there. And it's her manufacturer. Actually, he was a French manufacturer. I found a couple ads for him. And um, in the Great Exposi Exposition of 1851, he had some parasols in there. And I have his address. So if I ever go back to Paris, I'm going to go find his address and go, I had a parasol made in that building. Um, he was very famous, apparently. I'm not going to pronounce his name because it's French and I don't know what how to pronounce that. But um, it, it, apparently, he was very famous for his marquee parasols. 
and I can see a hinge, and I can see where it, where it definitely would fold, but I can't figure this out. He was very famous for his um, mar marquee patents, and so I think it's just a hidden patent that I don't know how to trigger, kind of like the other one. And I'm not sure how to do that, so maybe someone more talented than me can tell me how to make this happen. But as I can see, it looks like it would be a marquee. I can see what clearly looks like a hinge to me, but it doesn't want to work. So, hmm, it'll stay like this for now. But I just love knowing the manufacturer's name and having his address. And so, yes, that will have to be a trip one day. If I ever go back to France, I'm going to have to stop in Paris to look for this building and see if it's still there and just oogle over the fact that I have a parasol that was made there. Um, but it, it, she is missing her finial as well. We can kind of see the bone part where it would have screwed on. Um, so yeah, that, that is there. Alright, next one, another marquee parasol. This one also has no fringe or ruffles on it. This one's probably very late to post-war. Shepherd's Crick Candle with some very, very detailed carving on it. Very lovely. But yes, no, no print, no ruffles anywhere. Black lining, bamboo style, finial. Yes, so this is probably a little bit later based on the Shepherd's Crook. But yes, so she is all original as well. And those are basically all my marquee parasols. Very, very good parasols if you're just starting out and you need a parasol. They can work for most social social classes, although if you're extremely wealthy, you could probably get something else. But it's a good starter parasol. You can find them cheap, cheaply online. They're not really much to look at because they're all just plain black silk and there's you know tons of them out there. And so you t can get them pretty cheaply. Uh, you're, if you're paying more than $80 for them, I would say you're overpaying for them, at least at this point in time. So... Yeah, I, I, I look through every week to see what parasols are for sale, and if I'm not interested in them, I will usually post them on the Texas Living History Association's uh, Facebook page and to try to encourage some other people to get some parasols. So hopefully we'll start getting some more parasols out there that are good. Let's see, next one's another Chantilly. This is the one I was talking about that had a very, very thick, coarse lace on it. It's not nearly as fine and nice as you know, the other one was. And she's covered in black. Beautiful card finial though. Absolutely gorgeous. I've seen one other one with this exact finial. Um, but I didn't purchase that parasol. It was a little high um, for my taste. And this one is interesting because I can see her metal sleeve and I can clearly see some wear where this would have been pushed up very clearly, but it won't budge. So I don't know if this was, because around, eight, this is probably a little bit later, maybe 1864 or 5, I would guess. I don't know. Um, but a little bit after, like 1866, 1867, we're stopped, we stopped seeing the folding parasol. So I'm wondering if this is just an evolution step I haven't seen before, or, or if it broke off and someone decided, hey, let's glue it together. Um, I don't know if I get an exacto knife up there and just kind of slide and see if I can loosen it up. But I can, I can feel this wiggle, so it feels like it's like glued in right here. So I don't know, and I'm kind of afraid to mess with it for breaking with it. And she's all original, it's all her original cover, which is in fantastic condition, and her original lining is in fantastic condition. So I really don't want to mess with it, but it kind of irritates me because I just know it's a folding parasol and it won't fold. And I feel like someone did something to it, and that kind of worries me. So, I don't know, she's going to stay like this for right now, and that is essentially her, but you can kind of see how coarse, and this is, it doesn't even feel nice, like this, the purple one, it feel the lace feels nice, it's just so much fun to run your hands through, and it's just this coarse, and it's pretty lace, and I imagine if you had a different color cover on it, you would really show through, and be very, very pretty, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's not as nice as the other ones, so... I'm assuming this is a, a not as expensive parasol as the other. And my last one. So we talked about how the um, folding parasol went away. And this is kind of what replaces it. So this one I have recovered very This is my very first recovery job, by the way. So um, no judging. It's pretty horrendous. And this is not her original shape. Her shape was much more domed, so it should be 
much more like this, but I didn't know what I was doing. This is probably like four years ago, so, well, okay, maybe three. But, yeah, so maybe one day. I actually have this still to recover her. Um, I just haven't gotten around to it. I don't do this time period, so, you know. I actually bought her before I knew any better because I thought she would work for Civil War. And she was very cheap. She was like $58, and it had the beautiful lace on it. And I was like, ooh, I want that. And, you know, time to find out. She's not. So, the little brass here. Sometimes you see them a bone as well, all the way up. But um, they don't fold. They're later. They, um, I believe the dates on that are 1866 to 1870-ish is when those were made. And so, if you do post-war up until around 1870s, this is probably a good option for you. You can find them pretty cheaply. Like, I found this one. There's one up for sale right now that's for, like, $50. Um... But yeah, if you do Civil War, not appropriate. Um, but yes, her handle actually does unscrew in three different places. So it unscrews here, it's here, here, and here. And I don't know why they unscrew. Maybe it's just, um, you know, for carving purposes to be able to use it, you know, easily carve it. But yes, the brass up here does date her later. And so she cannot be used for Civil War, which is fine. Um, I don't particularly mind. She just sits in the, sits in the cabinet and... You know, I still have her original cover. This is, actually was her cover. I actually really like the brown. I would like to find one Civil War that's brown or goldish like that. I think it sets off the black lace very well. And it's very, very, it's just very pretty. I like that a lot. So, I suppose I could use this lace cover on the other one. But it, the design is different. Like, I can, t I can tell the difference even within the five years that this is, not what I would expect to see on an 1861 parasol. So I really don't want to mess with that. And I'd rather leave this cover with this parasol since so it belongs with her. So, more to ponder. We'll see. Um, yeah, I recovered her very poorly. This shouldn't happen. <laughs> um, there, yeah, I just did that wrong. But that's before I knew better. So, but that's essentially all my 1860s parasols. Uh, I hope you learned something, and um, I hope you enjoyed looking at my collection. I enjoy sharing it with you, and please come back to visit us on um, on some other videos, and I hope to do another one with um, 1830s and 1840s parasols, and there's probably going to be some, um, you know, dress vlogs in the future as well. So thank you so much for joining me, and have a fantastic day.